Hey guys, good morning. I wanted to share something, even though it's not really like complete and I haven't figured it out, but I understand like when people get confused when reading the Bible and the New Testament, right? Um, you know, we have to understand the whole, um, the whole context of everything, right? And some things seem to contradict, right? So I was reading in 2 Corinthians and I stumbled upon this one scripture. So Paul is talking about immortality and us receiving this gift of immortality. All right. Um, so the, the, um, the context of the scripture is in, it's, it's chapter five. So he says, I'll just read it. So you get what I'm saying. So he says, we know that if the tent that we live in on earth is torn down. And, and by the way, this is the, what is this? The common English Bible. So, um, we have a building from God. It's a house that isn't handmade, which is eternal and located in heaven. We groan while we live in this residence. We really want to dress ourselves with our building from heaven, since we assume that when we take off this tent, we won't find out that we are naked. Yes, while we are in this tent, we groan because we are weighed down. We want to be dressed, not undressed, so that what is dying can be swallowed up by life. Now the one who prepared us for this very thing is God. And God gave us the spirit as a down payment for our home. So he's talking about our gift of immortality when corruptible will put on incorruptible. So we are always confident because we know that while we are living in the body, we are away from our home with the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. We are confident and we prefer to leave the body and to be at home with the Lord. So our goal is to be acceptable to him, whether we are at home or away from the Lord. You know what? I should look up the word acceptable on the Bible hub thing. Maybe I'll do that next. Because in the carnal mind, somebody can read this carnally and take it to mean that you know, of, you know, that you have to, it's a work of the flesh. So he's, so it says here, the way it's translated it says, we all must appear before Christ in court so that each person can be paid back for the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good or bad. Now, what does that sound like to you, right? Like at first it sounds like, oh my God, be in court, like go before the judge. I'm going to get punished. For the things I've done wrong. Like a person who wants to take a scripture. And, and use it carnally against people. Can do that and say look. It says it right there. You're going to be paid back. For the things you've done wrong. But wait a minute now. That doesn't seem to line up. With the context of the gospel. With everything. Because in Romans we read. It doesn't make sense. That God would judge you by your actions. Right? Right? And what he's going to provide the gift of immortality based on your actions now. And, or he's going to punish you first for the things you've done bad and then give you immortality. Like, that doesn't make sense. There's got to be more to it. And I think, sometimes I think some things are translated in order to scare people. Anyways, so Romans 4 says, God credits... Okay, David also pronounces a blessing on the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from actions. That's supposed to be the whole point, <laughs> right? That's the point of the gospel. So it's like we go from that and it says, Blessed are those whose actions outside the law are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed are those whose sin isn't counted against them by the Lord. All right, um... There's, pro there's other examples, but I'm just saying that this is the whole point of Romans. You're counted unto righteousness, not because of the things that you have done, but by receiving that gift 
from the Lord. It's a gift. That's the good news of the gospel, the good news. Then you read this here. It says, we all must appear before Christ in court so that each person can be paid back for the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good and bad. I see it as you go to court because you are, things were stolen from you. You need to be restored, right? So anyways, I looked up, I went on this Bible hub and looked up some of these, this sentence in the Greek and it said for the phrase, the phrase of, um, be paid back to be paid back. That phrase comes from is the word homestai. It's like number two, eight, six, five. And it, it means to receive back, um, comizo to bear, to carry, to receive what has belonged to myself, but has been lost or else promised but kept back so I mean that makes sense to me because the whole time we're being promised immortality we're being promised that when we see him we shall be like him we're being made this promise okay so then at so then yeah before the judgment seat of Christ it would make sense that we would receive that promise that we would get that we would attain that he would restore that to us so, um, what else does it say? It says, get your earning to recover, right? Recover something that was lost. To me, those all sound like amazing things. It doesn't sound like what I feel like they're making it sound like in that translation. So, komeo um, is the word origin, komeo, K-O-M-E-O, to take care of, to take care of. Christ is going to take care of us. I don't know. This is how I'm seeing it. So, and then it, it also lists other things in numbers. Um, it said, and mind you, the whole time Paul is talking about this ministry of reconciliation in, in the second Corinthians, he's talking about how if, if, if ministry of death, if the ministry that served people with death because of their actions through the law was had glory how much more glory that the ministry that gives life that that offers righteousness to people that yeah that offers immortality to people right this is the whole context of everything so um it also says to take care for to provide for to take up or carry away in order to preserve uh, to carry away to receive to obtain the promised blessing. That makes total sense. We're going to be taken to the judgment seat of Christ, you know, peer before Christ in course so that we can receive the promised blessing. Uh, I mean, as far as the rest of the sentence, the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good or bad, I have no idea what that means. I mean, well, we're going to receive the promised blessings. Um, for the things that were done while in the body. I don't really, I have to look into that more to understand what that is saying. But as far as the phrase to be paid back for, that to that, when I look at, when I look it up in the Greek, sounds like a positive thing. Um, Because we're being, it says to, re, to receive and obtain the promised blessing. To get what was previously one's own, to receive it back, to recover it, maybe to go back to what, or to obtain our original design or God's original, you know, design for us of life and immortality. Um, and then it also used the example that when Isaac was restored back to God by God stopping that sacrifice, they are restored back to each other got each other back uh the recovery of hostages and captives all these things sound like positive things you know what i mean <laughs> god's gonna recover what was lost for us we're gonna receive the blessing of immortality um so it says we all must appear before christ in court i'm gonna change it so that each person can receive the promise 
can recover the things that were done. And I don't understand the rest of it while in the body, whether they were good or bad. I don't really understand the end of it or how that kind of plays a role in the rest of the meaning of that sentence. But to be paid back for, you know, I can start by understanding what that means. And to me, that's a positive thing. We want to receive the promise. It says to receive what has belonged to myself, but has been lost or else promised, but kept back. And this is the promise that's being kept back. We have the seal of the spirit, but we, we, earn, we yearn for that, the life of God. We, learn, we yearn for that, to be clothed with immortality, to not die, you know. To, so to me, that's what that means. And that's what he's going to give us before the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, you know, whether you did good actions or bad, I don't know. That seems kind of carnal to think of it in that way. So I'm not sure about the end of that. I have to, I have to um, look into that more and try to figure that out because it didn't, just doesn't make sense within the context of the bigger picture here. So um, within the ministry of reconciliation, um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah, God's going to recover for us and he's going to give us what we deserve <laughs> he's gonna give us what he judged that we deserve which is life and immortality in christ jesus you know the promise all right guys um have a great day and take care